Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, again, doing some of this charcoal landscape drawing. I sort of flip between this and watercolor landscapes these days. Landscape drawing and painting is probably about 80% of the sort of artwork that I do. The other 20% is a mixture of different things. Um, a little tiny bit of cartooning, some digital art, uh, different things. A bit of figure drawing as well. In terms of these charcoal landscapes, well you can see pretty much the materials I'm using. A piece of willow charcoal, a kneaded eraser, kneadable eraser, um, and two of these Derwent XL blocks. The one in the top is just compressed charcoal and then the one in the middle is, they say white charcoal, of course no such thing, it's, it's basically a soft compressed uh, pastel. The paper is just a sketchbook, some sort of generic sketchbook I bought from Amazon. Uh, it, I think when you're choosing paper, maybe the only thing or the main thing is surface texture because that can have the most direct effect on the final drawing, what it looks like. You know, if it's a rough paper, it's going to look different from a very smooth paper. This one has a sort of a medium surface, a little tiny bit of texture. So this is going back to the style of drawing that I did last year, the year before. I'm going to show you a few more examples of this type of drawing that I did, including some very early ones that I did maybe three years ago, up to more recent ones. Okay, so these are two examples, quite early examples of the charcoal landscapes that I do. I actually, the reason I started doing these was partly my desire to experiment with things, but also partly practical reasons. So at that time, this is about three years ago, 2020-ish, um, at that sort of time I was doing watercolor landscapes only, um, at least in terms of landscape art, it was just watercolors. But I had, for whatever reason, I'd forgotten to order some new watercolor paper. So when the, the paper that I had ran out, I was then left in a position where I had to order some and then wait for a few days, a week, or whatever it was for the new paper to arrive. But I did have some drawing paper and some old charcoal lying around. So I thought, well, why not have a go at just doing some charcoal landscapes, see what happens. I did like the aesthetic of old black and white photographs. So I thought, well, if I do some charcoal landscapes, maybe I'll like the results. And I'm glad I did try it because I do like the results. Um, I've tried experimenting with lots of different papers and the only advice I would give is when you're working with charcoal, I think the surface texture of the paper makes a big difference to the final result. You know, if it's a rough paper, you're going to get very different results than a smooth paper, especially if you, if you work like I do, where you're sort of moving the charcoal dust around, smudging it around and things, it will behave differently on a rough surface compared to a smooth surface. In terms of what is best, there's no such thing. It's just whatever works for you kind of thing. So you do have to experiment with different types of paper. Experimenting is good. Never be afraid to experiment in art, in my opinion. The other thing, I guess the other bit of advice I give is obviously using a white paper is going to produce very different results from using a colored or some sort of toned paper. And I've tried both. Um, I do like the sort of stark contrast that you get between the dark black charcoal and a whiter paper. But actually these early ones were done on 100% cotton drawing paper by Arches or 
arches or whatever way you want to pronounce that. They're famous, I guess, for making watercolor paper, but they also make different like drawing paper and things. But the drawing paper they have is a slightly creamy color. So it's not pure white. But I've tried it on other toned papers as well. And I, I'm pretty sure I've made a video about this quite recently. So those are the two things really. You need to experiment, see what works for you with the surface texture of the paper and with the color of the paper. And also, I guess, the different types of charcoal that are available. The other thing I wanted to talk about is completely unrelated, but still, it might be of interest. So this morning I watched a YouTube video. I can't remember who, make, who made the video, but I'll link it or try to remember to link it in the description box below. It's about an artist called Gary Mayer, American artist. He was, I guess, active from the late 80s, early 90s, something like that. And during the 90s, he did a lot of solo shows, group shows, um, got reviewed in a number of magazines by, you know, well-known art critics and things like that. He still makes art, but he's no longer a full-time uh, professional artist. He now works in construction and that's where basically he makes a living. It was one of the things, the reason I'm talking about this, one of the things at the beginning of the video that he's talking about when he was a child and in his grandmother's backyard, he used to find these feathers and he started collecting them. And his idea at the time, you remember he was a child at the time, his idea was that he would make a bird and this bird would come alive and fly away. So he collected all these feathers. When he had enough of them, he got an old Maxwell House coffee can and punched a lot of holes or got a, a grown up to help him punch a lot of holes in the coffee can and started sticking the feathers into it and covering this coffee can with um, feathers. And says, of course, it didn't turn into a bird that didn't fly away. But looking back as an adult, he can now see this as this is what art means to him. And I tend to agree. So art is not about how well you can draw or paint or things like that. Art, those things are important. I'm not saying they're not important. They are, but by themselves, they're, that's not art. Art is the process of transformation. In this case, transforming a bunch of feathers and a coffee can into who knows what, something. In his mind, a bird. In the case of, for example, on screen, you can see these two um, charcoal drawings. So you're taking charcoal and paper and transforming it into something that resembles a landscape or is reminiscent of a landscape. It's that act of transformation. That That's what art is. And I tend to agree. It's not about the technical skills. Yes, those things can help, they're important, but they're not art. So I've always thought that, you know, all this technical stuff and your ability to draw, it's something that, you know, you can work on over time. You don't have to wait until you're proficient in those things to start making art. Because art can be many different things. And it is a creative process rather than a, a technical, mechanical process. At least that's my opinion. That's how I look at art. And that's how, you know, other people look at it as well. So like I say, I'll try to remember to link the video below. It's quite interesting. Um, it's a well-made video. If you have time, I definitely recommend watching it. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and listening and hopefully see you again next week.